Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Now today I'm going to talk to you about Festool's cordless vacuum, uh, the Festool CTLC SIS. Now I've had this for about three months now and it's given me time really to get used to it and also to understand uh, the, uh, I think compromises are the right word, that Festool had to make in order to produce something in a package of this size. Now without its accessories it weighs 6.2 kilos and it does come with a little carrying strap so that you can have it over your shoulder whilst you go up a ladder uh, so you can be using it with a tool uh, in a position like that. Now let's start with the basics. First of all the form factor it's got the same footprint as a standard sustainer so you can put it on a stack of sustainers and uh, connect it or put sustainers on top and connect them. It comes in two forms. Uh, one is without batteries and the other is uh, with a set of batteries and a charger. Now, uh, I actually had a pair of batteries, so I bought it without batteries. But I soon realised that I did need a second pair of batteries. These are the 18 volt, 4 ampere hour batteries, and they're the slimline battery. Don't make the mistake of thinking that your normal battery uh, will fit, because it won't. Normal battery, too big. You need this slimline one. And they fit in very simply. One there and one there. That's the batteries in situ. Now even the basic version has Bluetooth capability and also comes uh, with the little remote control which you can mount wherever you like and I've put mine on the end of the hose. And there are also two, two tools that come with it. A sort of carpety type thing and a little crevice nozzle uh, like so. There's, there's no brush uh, but I have a spare one and uh, ordinarily I'll keep my spare brush in here. Now the front panel is very simple. Uh, you've got an on off button here. Uh, you can have it switched on manually but just by pressing this button. And you can also uh, alter the power. Currently it's on its um, highest setting, but I can reduce that to second setting or its lowest setting. So three power settings. Now the machine has Bluetooth and uh, when you first get the machine with this included Bluetooth remote control, you need to pair the two things. And it's done very simply. I've already done it, but you press and hold the Bluetooth button for about three seconds and this little light will light up then and then just press uh, the button here. Now I've already done that so now when I press this button the machine starts and when I press it again it stops. Now if you have a Bluetooth capable tool and by that really uh, that means a tool with a Bluetooth battery then it's uh, very simple to pair the two together. Just press this once, then run the tool. And you hear the machine. That's now paired. So when I now start this uh, tool again, and it switches off when the tool stops. Now, there is a run on period after you stop the tool, it continues. Uh, to extract and the reason for that is very simple that's to clear any dust which might be in the the hose or between the tool and uh, the actual vacuum itself. Now some of you may have seen my recent video where I went to someone's house and altered uh, the size of some drawers but leaving the fronts the same and this is the setup that I took with me. I had the uh, absolutely lovely CSC SIS saw and I took this extractor. And this extractor did, did a good job. It's linked via Bluetooth uh, and you do that just by pressing the Bluetooth button once and then starting the machine and then the extractor starts automatically. and the extractor switches off automatically as well. And there you see the neat little rebate using this machine. It's a lovely saw. And this perfect combination with the two machines if you're working 
uh, on site or away from base. And this is the reason I made this particular cart, so that the two things can travel together. It's very light, fits in the car very easily. The caddy area at the top is where these tools are kept and they sort of push into a little a recess there and this just pushes in like so and similar with the uh, other tool. Now people have said to me, oh I find the hose rather difficult to uh, stow. Well it's very easy. You start by letting the, the hose go into the caddy area and you, you push it in so it's going to the outside walls and then feed it round without kinking it and then eventually it's in there nice and tidy and it's very easy to do particularly with the new style hose and that's absolutely lovely. Now the machine uses the same dust bags that the original mains power CT sys would use they come in a box of five, and as you can see, they're, they're pretty neato. And I'll actually now uh, open the machine up so that you can see uh, how a bag is changed or fitted. First of all, we need to just move the hose out of the way, like so. And there's a hose connection here, and you just undo that uh, connection. And we're now able to take the caddy off the machine. And that's simply done by undoing the connector there. And now we've got access to the bare machine itself. And we can now open this top up in the normal sort of festival way, like so. And there we have the, the dust bag. Now mine's got quite a bit of dust in it, but it's nowhere near full. It takes a lot to fill these, these bags. Uh, you have a clip here, move that away to one side, and then you can extract the bag. Now, were I about to change this bag, there's a little tab here. You pull that tab and it closes the bag off so that as you handle the bag, no dust is going to spill out. But I'm not going to close that now because this bag's still got plenty of life left in it. When you fit it a new bag, uh, making sure that that's clipped in properly, you then just close this lid and away you go. And the, there is a main filter in this, and if you open this clip here and lift, you then have the main filter here, and you just pull that out uh, and you can replace it. In my experience, these filters last a long time. Every time I change a bag, I just vacuum off this area with a different extractor, of course, uh, and just to make sure there's no dust there. And those filters then last a reasonable length of time. I think I change mine probably about every every other year or so, so uh, but it does, does depend on usage. So there we go, that's that bit. Close that off like so. Put the caddy back on and then hold that in place by turning that and then we can reinstate the hose by plugging it in there. And in order to make the hose easier to handle, when you plug this in, plug it in facing away from the tools so that it gives a slight indication of curve, if you like, uh, for the hose when you want to stow it. That's it, that's the hose, neat and tidy, all ready to go. Now I've had this machine for a little while now and uh, I must make sure that you're aware of the compromises that Festool have had to make in order to get a battery powered extractor in this relatively small package. Now, the batteries are quite small, four ampere hours each, there's two of those, and your machine is only going to run for between 14 and 25 minutes, depending on the power level and the number of times you're switching it on and off. Now, I have noticed when I've had the machine on for a long time, and I've been doing a clear up when I was doing that job for that uh, friend of mine, uh, that the batteries will get quite warm and because of that, I think it's better to use one of the Airstream uh, battery chargers. That's the ones that uh, force air through the battery as it's being charged. Because if the battery gets hot in use, then an ordinary charger might not want to start charging it until it's cooled down. But with the Airstream type battery charger, 
uh, that will work. So that's, a, that's an important point. Now I've found the issue of how long it runs on one pair of batteries to be uh, not too bad for me. If you're running tools as I was with the saw and it's on and off, on and off, uh, and you're only doing a couple of cuts at a time, you're not processing a whole batch of things, then it's absolutely no problem at all. Uh, for me, when it came to a crunch was when I was doing the cleanup uh, and I was going around vacuuming the area where I'd been working. And then I took it inside and where these drawers that I'd fitted uh, needed to be sort of all tidied up, I then used it there. And so I was running it for a long period of time until the batteries died. And I was slightly frustrated then because I didn't have the second pair of batteries. Uh, but I've now got those. So uh, my recommendation is that if you're going to buy one of these, then factor in the need for a second set of batteries if you think you're going to use the machine over an extended period of time. Well, I hope this little introduction has helped. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good machine, but it's got those caveats about power. Other than that, go for it. And just one final thing as the credits are rolling, as it were. Um, I'm doing the editing uh, now using Final Cut Pro uh, and I'm using it on my Apple Mac. And so uh, please forgive me whilst I'm learning how to uh, use this new bit of software, but it's a lot easier than my old Windows-based laptop. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>